Welcome back, everyone. My name is Trap. Thank you for joining me this afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a great day. Today, I'm going to go over the NeoVim configuration script that I put together some time back. It was based on work that Elijah did. And we're not going to watch my video. I'm just going to reference it. And what I've done is I've moved the script into its own repository. I've got some documentation associated with it now. I'm going to go through the changes that I've made, give you some ideas on how maybe you can use it for yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just crap, copy that file. We'll go and create another session. And first thing I'm going to do is make sure that, that program doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is find if I do nvim s vim s, it's going to tell me it's moved. So in my original video, that file nvim s script was in my in my bash uh, dot files directory. I've left that script there, but it tells me it's been moved. If you look at that file, if you look at that script, if you've ever looked at my code basis. You're going to see that it's got the URL back to the repo that we just uh, referenced. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and paste that code in. We're going to do the installation process. It's going to be pretty quick. It's going to install. It's going to clone some things into the temp directory. It's going to execute the script in the temp directory, and then it's going to remove itself from the temp directory. And you will need super user pass, super user capability to do that. Now that the script is run. And I have to create a new session. So if I do the nvim s again, it's going to tell me it's still moved. But what I'll do is I will just create another session really quick. And I'm just going to type nvim s. And now I can see that it's the script is now there. It does have the fuzzy finder capability turned on. So we'll go ahead and do kickstart, which is um, the one that TJ did. He's done a really good video on that one. Just go ahead and install that one again. And so we're going to see that this is going to take off. It's going to create the directory. It's going to clone it. We're going to see here in just a few minutes. It's going to pop itself up. Uh, Kickstart. That may have been the primes. Uh, let me let me let's go to starter kit. So we'll do that again. We'll run in VMS again, and we'll do starter, and we'll run that one. So here's the starter kit. This one's going to have a little bit more in it. We're going to see that this is pretty quick though. That I can do these these things pretty quickly. Now the text size I've got right now is so big it's going to blow up the screen. So I'm going to slow it back a little bit so you can kind of see what it's doing as it's running. Okay, he's done. If we take a look at lazy. Uh, okay, we got some stuff installed, some, some plugins. So it's not a huge distribution, which is what you would expect um, for a starter kick. So we'll get out of this pretty quick. And I'm not sure what all the keystrokes are, but we'll figure them out as we go. And we'll put there, and now we're done. Now at this point, if I type in Vim and dash, I'm not going to find any of the aliases that are created because I need a new session at this point. So I'm going to exit this one again and just go right back in. Now my login script now knows about the distributions that I, I, I all the distribution names. That doesn't mean they're necessarily installed. I want to show you how we do that. So if I do the nvim s, I'm sorry, nvim, sorry, nvim dash, and here's all the ones that I know about right now. So if I take uh, nvim, uh, let's do uh, zero, that's good enough. Run that one. Okay, there's another installation. We take a look at Lazy. It's pretty quick. There's nothing going on here. It's nothing fancy, right? But if I want to take a look at the starter kit or the Kickstart, I know I've installed those. I can do Kick, and now I'm into Kickstart. And uh, sorry about that lousy typing today. Quit and get out of that one. And if we want to go over to a Starter Kit, there we're in the starter kit. And if we want to update, we can go ahead and tell it to update. So anything that's based on lazy, if you guys know, if you guys use lazy, nvim as your package manager, a lot of these that I am using does do use lazy. So their 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 keystrokes are pretty pretty consistent when you start dealing with the the, the lazy environment. Uh, you can see I'm typing the wrong stuff. Okay, so let's see what we actually did. Let's take a look at um, we'll go back to the website and take a look at some of the things that we did. So um, you got a couple things that you can use with the nvms. If you want to delete a configuration once it's been installed, you just run nvim uh, s with the d. That's a typo. We're going to fix that right now. I'm going to go in here and edit that file that was supposed to be nvms. Put an s character right there. Put an s character right there. And we'll commit the changes. And we're going to say uh, bug bug fix. Uh, use nvim s not nvim. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so you can see this is in real time. We're gonna we're gonna see that I made the correction. Now nvim s does the installation. Nvim s dash d is gonna allow you to delete something. So if I wanted to delete something that was installed, I would do an nvim s d, and then I could type in zero, and it's it removes everything that it goes into. Notice it's going into. 
the zero cash, zero config, local config, share zero. So the NVIM app name, remember, it, it installs things specifically to that distribution or to that NeoVim configuration. So you can delete these things and create them without worrying about are you gonna, are you gonna interfere with another configuration. So let's hop back over to the web page and take a look at a couple other things. Uh, you can do the control C, control P, and control N when you're navigating through that list of distributions. As of this writing, these are the di distributions that I put in. So comment on this third column out. Now, this is the default branch name. Uh, that's spelled wrong too, so let's go ahead and fix that as well. We'll go ahead and edit that file go back up there. Uh, where is it? Edit this file, and it should be default branch name. There we go. And let's say we'll save that change, and it's a fix. Okay, so we've got a spelling error fix. Great. Now that's done. All right, so. So you can navigate up and down. You got a list of, uh, there's NeoVim can be supported. There's another typo. Let's go ahead and fix that while we're in here. And beautiful thing code, code changes are. Edit this file. And we will go down here and say NeoVim configuration supported D and put a D in there. And we're gonna save that file. Commit changes yet again. Fix another spelling error. Great. So we're doing this in real time. We're going to probably cut some of this out. One of the things that I would suggest you do is, is if you notice, we're, we're putting things into the config NVMS app directory. Okay. So the, so once I log out of the system and log back in, my bash RC file looks for that, that NVMS app names and it sources it. So the NVMS script creates all the aliases right now it's not trying to figure out what you have installed it just creates them all so if you try to run something that doesn't exist okay it's, it's, this script isn't 100 percent bulletproof right now but it gives you some ideas on what you can do so if we go out and we take a look at that directory now we hop over to the config directory nvms and we're going to find there's two files here so Clear that screen and take a look at those files and we just do a cat of NVIM app names. Okay, no surprise there. There's all the configurations. So remember, even if you don't want to use this script, you can create your own aliases. You can install NeoVim in different ways. Just use that Vim, NVIM app name and make sure you install things into the appropriate directories. And then this is telling NeoVim to actually use that particular configuration, the stash, the um, cache, et cetera, things like that. And then if we take a look at the other file that's out there, we're going to find the NeoVim, um, uh, NeoVim distros. And it'll have the same spelling error in it probably in there. Or maybe it was just a copy paste into the word in your default branch names. Okay, that's cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, let's just cut and paste into the other one. Okay, so that's, that's basically it, guys. Okay, the last thing to do is show you that we can remove what we installed. So let's go ahead and do that. It's pretty quick. We're just going to paste that command in here. It's got the uninstall command. Let it rock. It's going to need your password for super user. You see what we removed? Not a big deal. If we exit and recreate another shell and we do MVMS, it's telling me it's been moved. Okay. So I hope this has helped you. Give you some ideas on what you can do. Clone this repository. Fork it. Do some things with it. Throw in a couple other either distributions or configurations. Let me know how it goes. Hope, you, hope this really helps you give, give you some ideas on how quickly you can set up a different Neo, Neo environment just to try it, just to see what it's like. If you don't like it when you're done, just do that remove command and everything is back the way it was. My name is Trap. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day and may God bless you.